Welcome to SNN Live. We're broadcasting from our studios in Los Angeles, California. I'm Shelley Kraft, and our guest today is Robert Goldstein from U.S. Nuclear Corp. It's a publicly traded company, and the symbol is U-C-L-E. Robert, welcome to SNN Live. Thanks, Shelley. Thanks for having me. It's good to have you. Let's start out with an overview of the company first. Sure. Uh, we make sensors. We make sensors to see radioactivity, especially tritium and radioactivity in water. We also make chemical sensors. We also look for radon. Okay, so these are all dangerous chemicals. Yes. Okay, so your business consists of designing, building, and distributing, and selling these sensors, correct? Correct. Okay, so who are your typical customers for sensors in the marketplace? Sure. We sell to nuclear power plants, we sell to hospitals, we sell to the national laboratories. 50% uh, of our sales are overseas and 50% domestic. We sell to uh, also universities and uh, new drug makers. So are there any uh, new devices or products that you've come out with lately? Absolutely, absolutely. The, uh, we are now uh, instrumenting drones. We're putting chemical and radiation sensors on drones. This is a, a big thing. All right, so let me, let me get this straight. Where, what are the advantages of obviously using a drone over using uh, any other way of uh, detecting gases, et cetera? Well, the uh, location is everything. So the, uh, if you can make a measurement up in the air, right in that cloud that's above the burning hospital, or right over that overturned rail car, or that uh, explosion, unknown explosion, then you're getting information you can't get any other way, and it's vital to have that information. So t what you're saying is that y you've developed the ultimate first responder, so that, uh, could you comment on that? <laughs> yeah, that's a great, that's a great tagline. I'm gonna use that. <laughs> well, to be more specific, what is it that makes it such a good tagline? Is it saving lives, for instance? Yes, yes, exactly. The, the, uh, a lot of times the emergency responders, they know nothing about what they're going into. They're very brave guys. They put their line on, life on the line all the time for us, but they, they may have to put on the hazmat suit. We're, we're helping to save their lives and, and the public uh, that are threatened by any kind of disaster. Well, speaking of a disaster, for instance, right? Yes. Um, the first responders have to get to the uh, site of the disaster as fast as they can. Right. Then they have to determine what is this disaster is composed of. Yeah. So the threat and to the loss of life is the fact that they're literally walking into the unknown. How fast could the uh, drone with sensors be deployed when they come upon a disaster? How long does it take to get the whole rig up in the air to see what's going on? Uh, it can be almost instantaneous because the, uh, all you have to do is make sure it's out of doors, of course, and then uh, you plug in the GPS you want to go to, and you can be there in a matter of minutes where, you know, snarl traffic, uh, debris on the road, uh, uh, dangerous fumes, and uh, uh, you skip, skip over all of that. Really? That's interesting. So once it's in the disaster area yeah. and it's reading the gases, right. how fast could it determine uh, and feed the results of the testing of the sensors back to the ground so they could alert the first responders and maybe, you know, require uh, um, evacuation, so to speak. Well, we have re real-time data transmission just like your, your uh, visual transmission from the drone that everybody loves. And so you get the data right away. Some of these measurements take a little while. If it's very diffuse, then you may have to stay in the cloud for 20 seconds or a couple minutes uh, to to figure out which uh, materials are in there, but uh, it's very quick. You know, I, I, I just thought about the fact that 
not every disaster takes place on level ground in the middle of a city or where roads are available. Right, right. So the drone could literally go into remote areas that it could take a really long while for first responders to, to get to. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, the, uh, an example is with a, uh, uh, for example, a uranium mine that I've been studying. They have uh, these tailings all over the place. It's broken ground, and it's on a hill anyway. And uh, to hire a hiker to go all around and find out where the radioactive uh, tailings are would, could take months and a lot of shoe leather, and you could do it so much quicker with a drone. So, Robert, who are, and I, I, want, I want a litany of who could possibly use this. Okay, super, yeah. So, uh, yeah, absolutely. The uh, military is an is a important target because, you know, the soldiers, they can't think twice. They just have to go in there, and if there's uh, clouds of dust and poison gas and, and uh, whatever, they have to be there, but you need to measure it to know what it is. And the same, uh, if you have uh, first responders and say there's a, a fire in a hospital, uh, you need to uh, go into that to cloud above the hospital and tell the mayor whether it's radioactive, have poison gases, or it's just a little dust. And uh, so the, uh, a lot of places that uh, chemical plants and power plants, they have schedules they have to uh, circle, circle around uh, four times a year to see what's, uh, what pollutants are going over the fence and then out into the community or, or check from the smokestack what's coming up through there. So there's so many uses. So I'm going to make a statement. Yes, sir. And I want you to make a comment. Sure. I think your business is regulatorily driven. You're absolutely correct. Very perceptive. The, the uh, Congress and the, F, the uh, EPA, they make uh, rules seems like every year they make them uh, tighter and tighter so to protect the public. You have to detect lower levels, and that keeps us on our toes, making better and better sensors. So how long do you think it's going to be before we realize that every hazmat fire engine <laughs> in every city virtually in the world is going to have a drone attached to the roof of the hazmat vehicle going to the to respond as a first responder absolutely right i think the general public already knows about it of course the uh, uh the, the feds have rules about uh, drones but that's they're changing them to uh changing them to make them more realistic and uh yeah the uh it's it's vital that we know what's going on in the atmosphere this is the biosphere we got to know what's your background I have a degree in physics from MIT and engineering from Stanford University. I have spent my career developing sensors for uh, medical procedures, for industry, and for drug companies. So my next question is, these sensors that are being attached to drones, yes, sir. how large are these drones, or how small are these drones, or how big do they have to be? So we, we're offering uh, two different drones at the moment. Our mini drone is about this size, about 18 inches. Uh, then the hexcopter, which is bigger. The advantage of the hexcopter over the four motor systems that, uh, that you get for your kids is if one or even two motors fail, you're still flying. You're not falling on some, somebody's head. So, uh, and they also carry a bigger payload, and that allows us to put more sensors on there and instrument the system even better. How long can they stay in the air? Uh, not that long. It's about 30 minutes. But that's a lot of time when you think of it because in a lot of cases you're going to drive to the fence line or drive to the uh, police line and then you fly from there. So, so uh, a lot of these missions, you know, take five minutes or something like that. Where is the science from, the science behind the sensors from? Sure. The, uh, originally it was developed at Los Alamos National Laboratories, part of the Manhattan Project. Uh, we've taken it a long ways from there. Now, when you have witnessed, yeah. um, when, when you take this and show it to a municipal government and they see how it works and they recognize the power of the sensors and what you're detecting, 
What's their reaction? Actually? They absolutely light up. They almost fall off their chairs. So, you know, like all my life I've wanted to do this, and, and now you're bringing this to me. It's just wonderful. So what do they what's what do they do then? Write an RFP or or um, you know how do they how do they begin the process of of instituting it into their procedures? Well, they have to have a lot of meetings, but eventually they get there. A lot of meetings, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Let's get a website out there uh, for more information, please. Okay, we're at usnuclearcorp.com. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Shelley Kraft. We're coming to you live on SNN Live from our Los Angeles studios. I want to thank Robert Goldstein of U.S. Nuclear Corp., a publicly traded company, symbol U-C-L-E, for coming on to today's show. I want to thank you for coming uh, on. Thank you, Robert. Thanks, Shelley.